Hi everybody, it's Lisa Marie here. Hi my sweet lifers. It's Tuesday. It's time for another sweet scoop. And I have been so busy with school. I want to welcome each and each of you guys that are watching and following along with my journey in seminary. And we are now getting to the end of our Lent and our time that we are in reflection of ourselves and helping others and all the different things that we do during the, the course of Lent. Um, it's a very special time indeed for all of us, and it is a, like I said last week, it's been a very, uh, this year especially, it's been a very large revelation for me, um, obviously because I'm in school and seminary, but it is just crazy. Um, last week, I was working on uh, John 1, 2, and 3. I also was working on Peter 1 and 2. I've got a little bit of Second Peter I want to read to you today. And some of my insights into what I learned last week in school. But, you know, in working with the books of the Bible in their entireties, in terms of reading the Bible that way, as opposed to reading the Bible in just snippet scriptures, it is really way more meaningful to do it that way, guys. Um, I really want to encourage you to do that because I... I mean, you get things as you're in school, and you get things when you're in Sunday school, and you get things when you're obviously in church, but to sit down and actually read each book from beginning to end really matters in, in capturing what the message is that's trying to be revealed to you. And for myself personally, um, one of the things that I really realized more this week, because I've also been working on my paper for James, um, and we talked a little bit about that last week with Faith and Works, is the significance of, of going the step further in a continued, in continued growth as a Christian, not just going through the motions of, you know, church on Sunday and Wednesday, but also really daily being in the presence of the Holy Spirit and asking for guidance before your feet ever hit the ground. I just cannot express to you the necessity of that in your spiritual growth and transformation. And, and my own experience has been so telling. Um, one of the things that happened last week is I was uh, studying and one of the books that did not make it into the Bible, uh, the book of Enoch, Enoch rather, um, was brought up in the text, and, and I kept reading it, and I kept thinking, okay, if I keep reading about this book, and I haven't read this book, then I need to sit down, stop what I'm doing with all the things that I have going on, and, and read that book first. And so, sure enough, um, I had it here in the library. I said something to my son about it, and he went and got it for me, and, and I had bought it back in 2021, and I know that because I was so intrigued reading this book that I reached out to my godmother. I reached out to several of my close friends. I was like, have you guys read this book yet? I know it's not in the Bible. I reached out to two of, two of my priests. One has read a little bit of it. He said it was a really cool book. The other one had read of it, but not read it, but it was actually in, included in his book, in his Bible from seminary, which I thought was very interesting as well. Um, it's a really interesting read. I really recommend you guys get that. Um, I I had ordered it on, uh, I think it was Amazon, like in 2021, thinking that I needed to have it in the house, like just needed to have it as part of what we had here in the library. But I never got a chance to sit down and read it. I do that a lot. I like to see a book or hear somebody say something wonderful about a book and I'll go ahead and get the book so I don't forget it. And then I'll have it. So at some point, hopefully, I'll, you, you know, I'm in this room. I'm in, the, I'm in my library, my office library, when I tape this for you guys. And hope at some point I'll have the opportunity to read everything that I have here. Uh, some of the books that are in here are absolutely keeper books. Uh, there's one book about God on a Harley that I read probably 15 years ago that I just love. I don't remember who wrote it. Um, and I don't know if I can put my hand on it right now to even tell you, but it was a really, really good book. And, um, but anyway, I, I, I pulled the book, James pulled the book, actually, he knew where it was. And I sat down, stopped all the text, stopped all the Bible, stopped everything for school and took the, the day, it took a full day to do it and read this book. Um, and it was so revealing guys. It's, uh, 
Actually, Enoch, en Enoch is the great great grandfather of Noah, and he his his interpretations and reading and writing about going and visiting with angels and figuring out their different responsibilities and portals to heaven and how vast heaven is um, is just mind-blowing. I mean, absolutely mind-blowing. Um, and it, it is just a really good book to read. Um, I don't weigh it nearly, you know, would not ever weigh it nearly uh, as heavily as I do all of the Bible. The Bible's the, the big book, right? Um, and, and that is the, the Bible that, you know, most of us have in our homes. Um, you know, Old Testament and New, for my Jewish friends, all the Torah, the Old Testament, valid, solid, spiritual, holy inspired scripture. Not sure why this book didn't get back in the Bible or how it got out of the Bible or what all happened there. But because it was mentioned so much in Peter's uh, lessons in school, I really felt the need to stop and actually read it, and I'm glad I did. So, anyway, I wanted to share that with you, too. But this week, it's been really interesting because, you know, James talks about, and we talked about this, like I said, last week. James talks about uh, faith and, and deeds and, and work and deeds, and basically, he is preaching, writing letters to his church in Jerusalem. And for those of you that don't know, James is uh, Jesus' baby brother. And um, he did not follow Jesus when Jesus was walking the earth, but after he died and was resurrected, he did. Uh, and he was very instrumental in being a very large leader in the early church and was martyred, And um, as all of the disciples, you know, were. But the thing that was interesting about James is that he was preaching to people in his church that were two vast parts of the society. He had very wealthy people in there, and he had very poor people in there. And we we were talking about this a little bit in the lecture, is that, you know, a lot of the churches that we have today are socioeconomically congruent, I guess is a good word for that. They're like, most of them are either serving all people that are very needy, or they're serving all people that are very wealthy. It's not a normal thing because of where they're located, I think where everybody's in the same circumstance, right? It's more of a homogeneous situation sociologically or, or, or whatever. But back then he had this like church in Jerusalem that was really struggling with this, this haves and have nots that were at church together. And they were not being nice to each other. They were not behaving in ways that would have been conducive to the Christian life. And part of his, his response to them in writing these letters was to let them know that, that they needed to go further in what they were doing. They couldn't just basically say that they believed in Jesus, but they needed to show it through their works. And I showed you that uh, last week in my, my sharing of my own life and realizing through sort of being more perceptive about what's going on with me, you know, acknowledging if someone needs something to be there as a, as a fellow brother and sister and to give things and to help um, in ways that are a little bit more, uh, what is the word? I don't want to use the word uncomfortable because it's not the right word, but more outwardly than what normally would have been done in earlier seasons of my life, right? You know, so I'm more receptive to that. I'm more perceptive of that. I'm more in tune to what's uh, around me going on and seeing opportunity. And then also realizing that in giving that, alms to someone who is in need or you know part of the responsibility with that also goes um, into sharing the good news and so what Peter talks about is the maturity of the the way that we grow right in our faith so you know it's not enough we talked about that it's not enough to just profess your faith it's not enough to just go to church here and there or even every Sunday for that matter and go through the motions we have to, in our daily lives, be actively present with the Holy Spirit, seeking guidance in the scriptures, in prayer, uh, working on what we do in the world that outwardly shows our Christian values, our Christian principles, morals, and how we believe in loving one another as Christ has loved us and loves us. Um, and so one of the things that 
that Peter talks about, and I'm going to go ahead and pull out these fun glasses. My uh, son-in-law saw the video last week, and he hadn't been watching Sweet Scoop, and he's like, cool glasses, Mom. I was like, yeah, they're so cool. They're so cool that I get to have to wear them now to be able to read a book. <laughs> the one wonderful things about getting older. But in Second Peter, uh, in the first chapter, five, verse 5 through 7, it says, um, it talks about, the divine power and granting to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence and why well, by which he has granted us his precious and very great promises so that through them that you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire and so peter's talking to his church as well about the things that they need to know in terms of what they should be doing and, and growing and transforming as Christians in their life and growing in maturity in their faith. And so he says here, 5 through 7, For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and with virtue with, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfast, steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. If, if, for if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so what Peter is telling me here is that we need to continuously not only show our faith to others through loving one another and giving things to people who are in need and being willing to do that, but we need to seek the word and seek knowledge in the word. We need to be steadfast in that daily um, and we need to make sure that when we are in a trial or a tribulation that we are persevering in our faith and asking God to give us wisdom and that falls into what I've been studying recently after Peter with John uh, is that it's so important to understand that we suffer in our life here but part of the reason why we suffer in our life here is to teach us lessons and to give us opportunities for growth. And that's hard to see in the moment, um, but part of being faithful and being a continuous work in God's uh, plan is to be steadfast and be very willing to and open to asking for wisdom and persevering that and having faith that that will be revealed to us. Uh, because in so many instances, within a matter of 24 to 48 hours, those answers are given to us. Um, you know, I know in my own life that's been the case. You know, something comes up and it's not necessarily an ideal situation. And I've just stopped and prayed about it and said, okay, I don't understand why this is happening. I don't understand where this is coming from. I don't understand anything about how to even fix it. But what I do know is that if I'll just stop and ask you to just keep me calm through it and help me figure out what you need me to do about it, that those answers are revealed to me. Um, and a lot of times it's just being really still. Um, it's like, uh, I think it is John, being slow to speak and quick to listen and really just staying calm and trusting and having faith in, in the Holy Spirit and in Jesus Christ to get us through it and, and God to show us the wisdom on what we might need to have learned from it, you know. But the other thing I wanted to share with you, because a friend of mine called me last night and we were talking about my work and my journey and, and all of this. And she was just like so sweet on the phone. She's like, you know, it's fun watching you go through this because it's like you are just changing so fast into a, a, a stronger Christian in your faith and it's it's just wonderful to watch and and you know I, I told her I said you know it's really interesting because um, when you do this when you get up and you 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 pray before you start your day and when you pray throughout the day and you pray before you go to sleep and you're thinking about God and everything that you see around you and you're really understanding that we are in this world but we're not of it any longer which is a big lesson to, to figure out everything changes. All your priorities get shifted to building a kingdom that is not here. It's it's not 
finished. And when you see that you're working in that direction and you're working in that way that is otherworldly, uh, a lot of stuff that you ever want or think about or used to just falls away. I mean, it's really crazy. Uh, I don't want to say I'm not ambitious anymore because I, I do have ambition. And for those that have known me for many years know I've had a really strong ambition uh, and dri drive. Um, but I'm driven now to just really seek scripture and to understand what exactly it's supposed to be revealing to me. And not necessarily what all these things are on my list to do each day that I've dreamed up. It's more like follow and let you lead. God leads and I follow and, and, it, and the day unfolds as it unfolds. And it's a very different way of living, I have to tell you. Um, it's a peaceful way of living, but it's a very different way of living. And it's not easy to fall into because it's it takes work. It takes steadfast steadfastness. And I would say even maturity, which is part of what Peter also talks about, is we all become, it's almost like, you know, when you think about, and I think, I can't remember where it is in the Bible, but they talk about like a newborn baby drinks milk to get sustained. We as Christians have to have the word and to, and to utilize that word in a way that it sustains us. And as we understand it more and more and more and more is revealed to us, the stronger we get. Um, and the more we're able to handle. And I think God sees that. I know God sees that. And that's his plan is for us to learn from that Bible. And so back to circle one, I mean, I really think that the one thing that I've learned the most over these fat, past three semesters in seminary is the way to read the Bible is book by book, not scripture by scripture here, there, and scattered but really just sit down and knock out a book, put put it down one thing that you want to get done and, and decide where to go with it. Um, and next semester, I just registered for summer classes. Next semester, we're back into the Old Testament. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I kind of feel like it might have been nice to start with the Pentateuch, which we did, and stay with the Old Testament until we were done, and then hit the Gospels, and then go from there. Um, I'm hoping this bouncing around is not going to confuse me because I'm finding now, which is also very interesting, I'm finding now that I'm through Peter and John and James and Matthew, Mark, Luke and Acts and John, I have, I'm able to crisscross some of the very specific screaming at me messages that are there. And one of them is works and deeds. Um, and, and I'm going to be going into Revelation this next week, and there is a spot in there, which I'll probably mention next week, that talks exactly about that. And it's also, some of that, to a certain extent, is in the book of Enoch, where it is uh, the end of the world here as we know it, and how things are going to be transformed into the new kingdom and new creation. And it is all about what we've done. It's all about how we've acted. It's all about what we've done. Yes, we have to believe in Jesus Christ, obviously. But there are things that have to be done. You can't just sit on your laurels and that's all you do. Action is the key. And action is going to be real important because what you do is very much what you're going to be judged by. So I think it's really important to share that with everybody because most of the people I'm sure all the people honestly that are in my tribe all of my sweet lifers you guys that are watching and those that follow me on other playlists on the channel every single one of you uh, are probably of the same mindset as I am I mean I, I don't know hopefully there's somebody out there that I've saved that I didn't even excuse me know that I've saved and I'll continue to do that and seek to do that every single day of my life but uh most of us already are, and I just don't know if everybody understands what all we still have left to do, because that's the thing that's been the most revealing to me, is that, you know, it's one thing to go to church on Sunday, it's one thing to tell everybody that you're a Christian. It's like I told my friend last night, and you can wear a cross, and you can tell everybody that you love Jesus, and you can wear shirts that say that, but if you're not living that in your daily life, if you're not being steadfast, if you're not persevering in your trials, if you're not faith without you know ceasing just ceasing ceaseless faith and hope and trust in every single thing that you do every day 
and wanting to share in love with your neighbor, you're not living the full Christian life. You're not living the full experience to maturity and transformation. And the Holy Spirit will not be able to work in you the very vast miracles that have been planned for your life as a Christian here while you're on earth. And it's so important to, to say that out loud, to say that, to say when you see, you know, things in the world that are not right. And we all know every day that that's the case. In fact, just today, this week, actually, uh, there was another shooting in a, a school, a Christian school. And I mean, it's just mind blowing to me. When will we learn? When will we learn there are certain things that are sacred that cannot be done. Thou shalt not kill at all babies. You don't do it. You don't do it in the Lord's house either. So I just don't know. I don't know how many times we have to say it. I don't know how many times we have to hear it. I don't know how many times we have to come to the understanding that we as people, humans, have been put here and we are going to be judged for what we've done to each other and ourselves. So it's so important to understand that lesson, so important to grow in your faith and to understand, I mean, obviously all the time. But when things like that happen, it just jolts me as a Christian because I'm like, what, what could have been done and why? You know, why, why, Lord, why, why are these babies not here with us anymore? What was the purpose of that? And obviously, I'm going to tell you that just from my own personal revelation, Satan is everywhere, guys. He is sneaky and he is everywhere. We have got to be so steadfast in our faith and hold, hold tight to the word and hold tight to, to God and, and just be as close as we can to the Holy Spirit to help us in every single thing that we do every single day. Um, so... That's kind of where I am right now. Um, I'm getting ready to wrap up this big old paper on James, and I'll share some of that with you next week, too. I'm correlating my time when I wanted to be in, in a comedian and be on stage to my time now that I've answered the, the call fully. And, you know, there's a book I've been reading that's a lot of, I think it's laugh, laughter and something, divine, the divine laughter or something like that. It, it really uh, correlates the relationship the comparison, rather, of people who are on stage as comedians and people who are actually doing the same thing, but we're doing it in a way different way, uh, who are preaching the word of the Lord. Um, but there are a lot of similarities into that particular uh, profession in terms of, of the logistics of how it goes down. But I'm so glad I didn't answer that call. I'm so glad I answered the call of the Lord because I think that there's a lot more to be revealed to me and a lot more I can share with you in a way that maybe you can relate to. And that's really what I'm hoping Sweet Scoop is doing. So many people have reached out to me and I want to thank you for that because it's a really neat thing to see um, when people say, hey, you touched me. Because it's not always easy, right, to just get up, get dressed, and sit in your couch and talk to your camera. There's a lot that goes on psychologically to be able to do this. And I have a lot of faith and trust in, in the Lord that I'm doing the right thing by doing this and sharing with you what's going on in my noggin each week and how I'm getting through seminary and the things that are being revealed to me. So I hope that you guys are finding some value in it. I know that I'm finding it helpful to hear from you that you have, when you have. And it helps me uh, have the courage to keep going with it because it's it's a step. It's a baby step for me in my own maturity and spiritual growth to be able to share. It's an extension of what I'm doing in my faith as a Christian. Um, it's one of the things that I know I've been called to do to share my gifts because I'm able to talk like that or like this rather. Um, but I also know that it's, it's not from me, it's from him. And so I want to make sure I'm using those gifts in the best way that I can to reach those that need to hear it. So anyway, like I said, a lot of Peter stuff this week, a lot of Enoch this week, a lot of Revelation. But the main thing is, is that we're all growing and that there's a whole lot of stuff that we got to do besides just say that we are and that we believe. We've got to act on it and we've got to work on making sure that we have done things in our daily life that are reflective of Scripture 
and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that to us so that we understand it better. So anyway, I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Hope you guys have a wonderful week as well. Um, we are almost there with, with Easter coming, just almost at the very corner of next week will be Palm Sunday. This Sunday is Palm Sunday, so next week will be in Holy Week. So we'll just get right on that. I've got a couple of things I want to share with you next week about uh, the donkey and about Mary. And uh, there's just, it's a beautiful season for us, the resurrection of our Lord. I cannot tell you. I love Easter more than Christmas, really. I mean, Easter is my favorite time of the year. So anyway, I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. And I will see you uh, next Tuesday on Sweet Scoop. Have a great week and take care.